Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and um, I want to talk about kids today, one of my favorite topics, kids, if we can get kids healthy and they don't grow into unhealthy adults, that should be something we can all get behind. Um, so let's start with getting kids outside. A lot of reasons to get kids to spend time outside. They need more physical activity, they need fresh air, they produce vitamin D in response to sunlight, but I'm going to give you another reason. More time outdoors may improve their vision. Researchers in China uh, enrolled over 1,900 kids. They were in grade one in 12 different schools, and they were randomly assigned to two different groups. Students in the intervention group participated in a mandatory 40-minute outdoor class at the end of every school day, and their parents were um, educated and told that they were supposed to get their kids to spend more time outside on the weekends and on holidays. Students in the control group didn't do anything different, did not have an outdoor class. During three years of follow-up, the researchers evaluated the onset of and progression of myopia in both groups. At the end of the three-year period, the prevalence of myopia was significantly lower in the group that participated in the outdoor class than in the control group. Kids who spent more time outdoors had a 9.1% reduction. That's absolute numbers, by the way, uh, in incidents. The intervention group also had significantly smaller changes in spherical equivalent refraction as compared to the control group. The authors noted that this was clinically significant since, quote, small children who develop myopia are more li most likely to progress to high myopia, which increases the risk of pathological myopia, and that in turn increases the risk of developing retinal degeneration and other conditions that can threaten eyesight. The authors noted that any delay in the onset of myopia or eye diseases can have long-term health benefits since younger children have a higher rate of um, progression than older children. The effect, by the way, was almost entirely due to the 40-minute class because the attempts to educate the parents to get their kids outside more was largely a failure. That didn't happen. So it really was just the one, the extra 40 minutes a day during school days that the kids had. The major limitation was no mechanism of action was identified. So further research is needed, but, um, uh, and, and there also wasn't any specific, like this much outdoor activity will produce this specific result, etc. But, you know, there really aren't any risks risks associated with encouraging kids to spend more time outside, so why don't we just go on ahead and do it, even if we can't quantify all the results at this point. I have to believe they'd be better off outside than spending so much time inside looking at computers and phones and uh, videos and all that kind of stuff. All right. Now let's talk about school lunches from a different perspective, all right? So we all agree that the food served to kids in schools most of the time needs improvement. There's a lot of controversy about this right now because there have been some attempts to serve kids more fruits and vegetables and everybody's seen the articles about the kids just throwing food away, which was highly predictable by the way, because if you don't educate kids about healthy eating and they don't know why they're eating stuff, they haven't been taught to eat it, um, they're all gonna whine and cry that they wish they had chicken nuggets and I get disgusted when I I read articles in um, the major newspapers where parents and teachers sympathize with them. Oh yeah, you poor kid, you've got to eat vegetables instead of chicken nuggets instead of saying, eat the right foods, we're not going to have a discussion about it. I mean, the fact that we facilitate this kind of stuff makes me crazy. But in any case, a new study shows that the length of the lunch period goes a long way in helping kids to eat better. So this looked up, this research group looked at over a thousand kids in uh, grades three to eight. Uh, they were attending six different schools and the lunch periods varied in the schools from between 20 to 30 minutes. So uh, for kids receiving free lunches, which were the subject of the study group, there was a clear relationship between the length of the lunch period and the students' food choices and eating patterns. Kids who had less than 20 minutes to eat were less likely to choose a fruit at the lunch line than those kids who had um, 20 to uh, 25 minutes. So it was dose dependent. If the kids had 20 minutes, less likely to choose a fruit than kids who had um, uh, between 21 and 24 minutes. Those kids less likely than the ones who had 30 minutes. So the more time you give kids to eat, the better their choices are going to be. Now, the length of the lunch period didn't affect at all the choice of vegetables, but it did affect how much of the vegetables the kids ate. So students who had less than 20 minutes finished 13% less, less of their entree and 12% less of their vegetables than kids who had just five more minutes of lunch period. So if we lengthen the lunch period, and I think about it, 20 minutes to go through the lunch line, sit down, 
and eat. It's no wonder these kids throw so much food away. But if we extended the length of the lunch period, which some schools managed to do this, as evidenced by the ones that were in the study, the kids would choose better and the, they would eat more of their food. School food service managers agree. One survey showed 44% of them reporting that kids did not have enough time to eat. The researchers noted that in addition to contributing to poor eating choices, limited eating time can decrease satiety. Well, of course it does if you throw away a good portion of your food, which then can lead to um, compensatory overeating. That's one of the reasons why kids may overeat later, is they don't eat enough at lunchtime. So this study is one of many that have managed to show uh, that there are a lot of issues concerning the effect of the environment um, and other related factors on kids eating habits at school. Um, some that I've covered before have shown that the color of the walls can make a big difference in terms of how agitated the kids get. Um, that um, round tables lead to less misbehavior than oblong tables, that when teachers and staff eat with the kids, that the lunch is calmer, uh, and that the timing of the lunch matters. For example, um, lunch kids eat, who eat after recess finish more of their food than kids who have a lunch period and as soon as you finish eating you can go out for recess because kids want to go outside and they throw a lot of their food away. Now these changes should be easy to make. They're you know, distressingly difficult to make and I think one of the reasons is we need to give more local control to schools. Um, the more disconnected people are from the constituents that they serve, the worse things get in my opinion. So if we restored more local uh, control of schools, maybe we would get more responsiveness because I can't imagine we would have much debate about things like letting the kids take enough time to eat. I mean, I'm interested in seeing what parents going to stand up and disagree with that one, right? They could disagree with a lot of, about a lot of other things, as, uh, as you know, but these, are, these should be simple things to fix. All right, that's all for today. As always, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you next Tuesday with more news.